Welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to deal with the topic in payment review. Okay, that's IA Estate Six. Okay. Uh, so first of all, let's deal with the introduction. Okay. Uh, so if you check, I said the company cannot show uh, anything in its accounts uh, higher than what they are actually worth. Okay. We should not overstate. Remember the prudent concept. Okay. So what they are actually worth, the assets in the business. What they are actually worth is called the recoverable amount. So, as business records this transaction, no asset can be in the account at more than its recoverable amount. So, for a business, it's better to understate than to overstate. So, assets need to be checked that their net book value, which we call the carrying amount, is not greater than its recoverable amount. So, if it is more the net book value is greater than the recoverable amount the asset should be shown at its recoverable amount okay so let, what is impairment of assets impairment refers to the fall in value of assets so that its recoverable amount or the market value is now less than the carrying amount and the carrying amount let's say that's your normal net book value when you say cost minus depreciation okay then the objective of IAS 36 uh, is to ensure assets are not shown at more than their recoverable amount in the statement of financial position okay so let me give you key definitions uh, which we'll be using in this topic number one we have what we call the carrying amount remember I said your carrying amount is your net book value Number two, we have what you call recoverable amount. Recoverable amount, I say, is the higher of an asset or its cash generating unit, or which is the fair value, isn't it? Less cost of its what? Disposal and its value in use. So recoverable amount is the higher of what you call the value in use and fair value less cost to sell. What is fair value less cost to sell? Fair value less cost to sell is the amount obtainable from the sale of an asset in a bargaining transaction between knowledgeable willing parties in other words that's the open market value of an asset okay then we have what you call the value in use the value in use refers to the discounted present value of estimated future cash flows expected to arise from number one either from the continuing use of an asset uh, Okay, uh, either from the continuing use of an asset and to its disposal at the end of its useful life. Okay, then, um, what are the stages in payment review? There are certain stages which you follow. Okay, uh, normally I shall show you a practical question the requirements of the examiners. Number one, normally they will ask you uh, to determine the fair value, less cost to sell, or either to determine what you call the value in use, then the recoverable amount, then the carrying amount. Okay? So the first thing you have to do is to determine your recoverable what? amount. What is the recoverable amount? Remember I said the recoverable amount is the higher of fair value, less cost to sell, and the value in use. Okay? The higher of the two. That's your recoverable amount. For example, here, let's say our fair value less cost to sell to 1.5, our value in use is 1.8. So the higher between the two is the 1.8. So this asset will be, its recoverable amount will be 1.8. Then the next part of the question, they'll ask you, uh, what is the value the asset should be shown in the statement of financial position? Remember I said the asset should not be shown at more than the recoverable amount. So the value at which the asset should be shown in the statement of financial position is the lower of the carrying value, which is your net book value, and the recoverable amount. For example, let's assume our recoverable amount is 1.8 and our carrying value is 2,000. Therefore, this asset should be shown at the lower of, which is 1.8. So the asset will be shown in the statement of financial position at 1.8, okay? Uh, then, if whenever 
the carrying amount is greater than the recoverable amount, it leads to what we call an impairment loss. So our impairment loss here is 2000 minus 1.8, that will be 200, okay? Uh, then, what is impairment loss? An impairment loss arises when an asset carrying amount exceeds its recoverable amount. So in other words, the asset is impaired and must be written down to its recoverable amount, okay? An impairment loss should be recognized whenever recoverable amount is below the carrying amount. And the impairment loss is an expense in the income statement. Then, in future periods, we now adjust our normal depreciation, okay? Uh, let's go to reasons for impairment loss. Number one, technological change. Remember, I'm simply saying, what could cause an asset carrying value to be greater than its recoverable amount? In other words, the recoverable amount is what the asset can fetch in the market, okay? It can be because of technological change, there might be uh, economic downturn, damage to the asset, fall in the market value, changes in demand, okay? Then, in the next video, uh, I'll be dealing with um, uh, uh, a practical question whereby I'll be showing you how to determine the different values as illustrated in the what? In the question. So that's your impairment review introduction. Thank you.